Well, Nvidia has gone and done it again. AMD announced their budget GPU, the RX 5500, a few weeks ago, and what do you know? Now we have the GTX 1660 Super from the green team launching today. This brings the Turing GTX lineup to four cards the GTX 1650, the 1660, 1660 Super, and the 1660 Ti. Today we are playing with the Inno 3D GTX 1660 Super, so let's jump in and find out what it brings to the table. Before that, don't forget to subscribe to TechFix and hit that bell icon to stay updated with everything about gaming and tech. The Eno 3D GTX 1660 Super is an entry-level model, which means it goes for a pretty simple look without any frills. It sports a black shroud and a twin fan dual-slot design with a decent-sized heatsink for cooling. And this one comes with a backplate too, which isn't something we see in a lot of entry-level models, so that's always a good thing. By looks alone, the card feels a bit plasticky, but it chooses function over form, which is something we can appreciate. For display options, this card comes with one HDMI port and three display ports, which more or less has become the norm for modern GPUs. Talking about specs, the 1660 Super is like a buffed up version of the GTX 1660. It has the same number of CUDA cores and the GPU clock speeds are the same too, but the 1660 Super has much higher memory clock speed and bandwidth. In fact, the GTX 1660 Super's memory bandwidth and speed are even higher than the GTX 1660 Ti. On the VRAM side, all three cards run on 6GB GDDR6 memory. So, does the bump in memory speed and bandwidth give the 1660 Super any sort of edge in actual gaming performance? Let's find out in the benchmarks. And if you like what you've seen so far, now would be a good time to hit that like button. Performance-wise, the 1660 Super sits somewhere in between the GTX 1660 and the 1660 Ti as expected. The performance gap between the 1660 Super and the 1660 hovers between 5-10%, to but there were some occasions where it got dangerously close to the 1660 Ti, pushing the difference under margin of error. It can run pretty much any game you throw at it comfortably at 60fps on high settings, if not the highest. Tweak around with the game's graphic settings and you can easily get an enjoyable, high fidelity experience at a mixture of high and ultra settings. On the temperature side of things, our Inno 3D card does a decent job as well, with the maximum temperature reaching up to 74 degrees Celsius during stress testing. With all that out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Should you buy the GTX 1660 Super? According to our sources, this 1660 Super is launching at a price point of about 19,000 rupees. The current starting price of the 1660 is about 16,500 rupees, and the 1660 Ti starts at about 21,500 rupees. This puts the 1660 Super smack in the middle. And that's nothing to say about the different variants of these cards, each of which bridges the gap between these three. So, for the sake of clarity, we'll just focus on the basic models. The GTX 1660 Super has a clear advantage over the 1660 and gets close to the 1660 Ti as well. So, if you were looking for a 16 series card and haven't made the leap yet, the 1660 Super is the sweet spot. What's more interesting, however, is the effect this card will have on the other GTX 16 series cards. There could be a price drop on the 1660, which may end up bringing it to the 1650 territory, and the 1650 may just get a price cut of its own, which wouldn't really bode well for the red team's RX 5500. So, the best course of action in this case would be to wait a week or two and then make an informed decision based on the final pricing. I know that's not very helpful, but with so many moving parts, it's best to not rush into hype. If you like this review, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Let us know what you think about the card in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.